Hello and welcome to Coral Gables Television Studios. I'm Brianna Moles. On this edition of Coffee Talk, we're sitting down with Dr. Jeffrey Horsmeyer, who among other many prestigious titles, is the founder and chairman of the Neuroscience Centers of Florida Foundation, an organization dedicated to the research and treatment of diseases such as multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and stroke. He's here today to talk with us about a new Alzheimer's Caregivers course, which was developed in partnership with Miami-Dade College to fill an unmet need in our community. Thank you so much for being here with us, Dr. Horsmeyer. Thank you for the invitation. Of course, it's our pleasure. So let's talk about Alzheimer's. I know this is obviously one of your specialties. Many people have heard of it, and many may know someone affected with the disease, but a lot of people don't understand the real facts behind it and simply categorize it as memory loss that comes with age. But tell us, in reality, what Alzheimer's is. Sure. Well, Alzheimer's disease is one of the neurodegenerative conditions, and it's one of the more common ones. Other uh, well-known neurodegenerative diseases are Parkinson's disease, uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS. Uh, Alzheimer's disease is very prevalent. Uh, currently, between now and 2025, the, uh, the incidence of, of Alzheimer's is going to uh, uh, increase by 44 percent. Currently, it's the eighth uh, leading cause of death. Uh, it affects women twice as often as men, primarily because they live longer and it creates a huge burden on, on our society and on families that have to care for these people uh, who are afflicted with the, uh, the condition. It affects more than five million people in the U.S. alone and there still is not yet a cure. I know that they're obviously continuing to research but you told me that the problem is that they don't know the cause of this illness. That's true. Yeah. Currently in Florida, 12 percent of the uh, elderly population have Alzheimer's. It's a really a huge public health issue. No one know and it, things like the caregiver course and uh, the proper management of the patient is so important now because there is no cure. And you know, once uh, someone's uh, diagnosed with one of these neurodegenerative conditions, it really is a matter of, of, of certain medications which can help but don't cure the disease. But even more importantly are the, the management of the, the various aspects of how their life is affected as the disease progresses. Tell us a little bit about this course. I know that you have helped develop it along with Miami Dade College, so tell us a little bit about it. So part of our mission is to uh, provide all of the services and treatments available to try and keep patients at home, uh, at work, and out of the hospital. And a, and a very uh, important aspect of that care is uh, caregiver, uh, the caregiver role. And uh, we, we identified in Miami-Dade an unmet need for uh, really educating the caregivers in the practical aspects of, of caring for these patients. And by practical aspects, I mean things like how do you prevent falls? That, that's a, it's a huge issue with, with the elderly and a, and a major driver of, 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 of disability, mm -hmm. of morbidity, of uh, uh, even mortality in the hospital admissions. How to feed a patient with dementia that, uh, so they don't aspirate and they, they maintain good nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, how do you manage behavior? So many of the Alzheimer's patients uh, get behavioral issues and, and when the family or the caregiver uh, doesn't really know how to manage that, uh, then they, they end up taking the patient to the emergency room, you know, out of exasperation, really not mm -hmm. knowing how to control the situation. So we want to provide actual practical hands-on training of how to deal with these different uh, issues that, that lead to hospitalizations and through dealing with these things improve the quality of life not just for the patient, but for the, for the family and the, the caregiver as well. For the whole family. It really, it really yes. trickles through the whole family. Um, and so this is a 16-hour course, um, yes. and I know that you guys are very flexible. Um, it can either be given in two full days of eight hours each or four days of four hours each, because obviously you're taking into consideration the caregiver's responsibilities. They might not have all day if they have the family member to take care of. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about how you guys have, have considered all these factors in designing the course. Sure. So the, the course is designed for really two groups of people. One is for the family member who is now charged with uh, taking care of mom or grandma or grandfather and, uh, and you know, within the family unit. But it, the other is for those people that are hired by the family to come in and take care of mom and dad. A lot of times, in, particularly in Miami, uh, people are hired from the Caribbean, Central, South America region. Uh, frequently, they're not, they're not, they don't have a high level of education, but they're, they're good-hearted, uh, you know, reasonable people sure. and with no training. And so our course is really designed for them as well, that the family can send this individual to the course, and at the end of it, they'll get a certificate of completion, and the family can you know, have, some, have some confidence that the, the, that the, the caregiver now has these basic skills mm -hmm. on how to manage the, these uh, important aspects of the uh, of caregiving. Exactly, because it's a very unique situation when you have a family member that 
is ill but is able to stay at home and they don't need yes. to be in a facility and you have someone like a you know a caregiver whether it's a, a family friend or someone in the family or like you said someone who's hired you never really know how educated they are because it's it's a very personal thing to be someone's caregiver so yes. this kind of course really is important because even though people may mean well they might not know the correct ways so this is some really formal training for them Yes. And I know that you guys are also offering um, scholarships, is that correct? Yes. For people that might not be able to afford the course? Yes. It's only $95, which is such a great price for all the education you're getting. But yes. tell us about the scholarships also. Yeah, so we also are going to self-fund and are looking also for grant funding to provide uh, scholarships for some of the those who may not have the, the you know, maybe a, a burden for them to also pay the $95. Uh, we also are looking into getting respite care. One of, one of the things we recognized right. is for the if the caregiver is working, taking care of someone, and they want to go to the course. Well, who's taking care of the uh, patient? Exactly. And so we uh, we we've gotten some funding for some respite care. Uh, that we'll, we'll uh, be offering as well. It's great that you guys have thought of all of these conveniences. And something else I wanted to touch on as far as the course and what's going to be covered, something that people might not understand is that when you're a caregiver, there's multiple roles associated with that. So yes. you're not only sort of the chauffeur or the cook, the shopper for everything, but you also have to manage medications. It's a lot of things and also learning how to communicate with that patient when they have their different episodes, whether it be emotional or yes. anxiety, etc. So tell us a little bit more about the course syllabus in terms of the details yeah. of what the caregiver will learn. So as an example, behavior management. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as as uh, the Alzheimer's progresses, the, the patient really becomes more infantile in a way. Mm -hmm. and, and and uh, people taking care of the Alzheimer's patient as they become more and more demented start to view them as a child and the difference is uh, a child you can train them right and that you can't do that in the in this circumstance and, and as an example uh, there was a daughter who was sitting in her living room with a mom and who had Alzheimer's and uh, and the mom was sitting in the living room that she had been in for 35 years mm -hmm. and uh, mom turned to daughter and said I want to go home and sitting here in the living room for 35 years. And mm -hmm. so the daughter, being very smart and educated and knowing what to do, didn't, didn't confront her, challenge her, mm -hmm. which is what gets the patient more riled up, more, more upset and agitated, and, yes. and not uncommonly leads to an emergency room visit because the behavior goes out of control. Oh. So instead of saying, well, don't you recognize the picture? What about the, uh, the dog? You know, what, you know, all the different right. things that one might recognize in the living room. Instead of doing that, she said, okay, and they got out, got in the car, and drove around the block and came home. Really? And that problem simple. solved. Wow. So it's those sorts of learning that, you know, in terms of behavior management, as an example, learning uh, that you don't challenge the patient, you redirect. Uh, there's no rationalizing, there's no reasoning. Right. There's, there's redirecting and, 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 in a way, trying to satisfy the, the, uh, the, the emotional driver of, of the moment. Exactly, and yes. I, I had mentioned to you um, off camera that my grandmother actually suffered with dementia the last several years of her life, and my aunt did a great job taking care of her, but yes. at times it was very frustrating because sure. you're not quite sure what to do in, yes. in those situations, and being able to be educated and know those types of things about not challenging the person and not trying to correct them or argue with them is so important because it can make a world of a difference. Yes. Because they really can feel lost at times. I, I did see my grandmother, you know, sort of the same thing that you said let's go home or where are we or let's get up now and it's you know three in the morning or something so they do need help and it's very important to be able to help them as best as you can and yes. that's what this course will do and I know Dr. Horsmeyer that you also are involved with so many other organizations in the community so what are some of the upcoming projects that are going on within your network of, of organizations? Sure thank you. Our ph philosophy within the foundation is to work with those groups and leverage and and enhance services that are already being provided uh, including research. So we, we work uh, closely with, uh, with the Florida National University. I'm on the board of directors. I was the founding chairman of neurology. Uh, Neuroscience Centers of Florida Foundation is uh, providing funding to one of their top researchers, a uh, Dr. Uh, Sakrat Kisarov, uh, who's doing a, a groundbreaking research in, using nanotechnology wow. for addressing, uh, you know, trying to find treatments uh, with, uh, uh, for some of the neurodegenerative uh, diseases. We also are working with uh, uh, Dr. Andrew Shalley, a Nobel Prize winner at uh, the VA on a, on, a, on a similar project. It's very inspiring to hear that there's such a growing community that's doing the research in our own backyard. Well, thank you so much again, Dr. Horsmar. It was such a pleasure having you in the studio today. Likewise, thank you. Well, that's all for this edition of Coffee Talk. I'm Brianna Moles, and from everyone here at Coral Gables Television Studios, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.